Hi, my name's Bill. I work for Dominion Technologies. I'm going to do today a video on the rebuild of air pressure decay number APDX 31945 BET. Um, these are, there's not too much to this adapter. It's uh, basically uh, you disassemble it. Got two screws up here at the top. You can see the screws are called out right up here, 202 via M5 by 35. The thing with this adapter is it's got a compression spring inside that's pretty big. So what I'm going to do is I'll take one screw out first. And then with my hand on top of the adapter, I will slowly unscrew the other screw. And as you can see, the sleeve is starting to rise above the jaws. Okay, there it is. It's loose. And the manifold sets on the top. It doesn't set inside, so you gotta be careful it doesn't slide off like it just did right there on the table. I'll set the screws off to the side, pull my spring off, then I take my jaws off. Now, the jaws, if you spin them, just a little spin to the side like that, it'll come out from underneath the garter spring. Just lift it up, spin it, lift it up, spin it. And they come out pretty easy. Just try not to hook the garter spring too much so that you don't overextend it and stretch it and put a kink in the spring. Once I get that off, I take my fingers and push the piston through the cylinder. Take my garter spring off, and this here is pretty much the whole adapter in pieces. So once I get to here, I will take my seals, pushing in, starting with the main seal and the seal on the side of uh, the piston. Two top seals, three top seals there. And that completes the piston. I will pull the garter spring, it's usually setting like this. I will slide it off of the cylinder. Then I will get my slide ring and lift it up a little bit, slide it off the cylinder. And the main seal for the cylinder is right there in the top and I'll pull that out. So you have three seals there. No seals here, no seals on the sleeve and no seals on the manifold. The manifold seals right up here at the top on the piston. Oh, on the piston. Once I get that done, I'll visually inspect 
to make sure there's no burrs or gars that this is a nice flat surface. No burrs, no divots, nothing like that. So that this here is a nice flat surface. I may even take a file and run it over it after I clean it up. I will burr the spring and the sharp corners. I'll check the jaws for any substances that need to be washed off or scrubbed off. Then I'll check for a nice smooth surface on the inside of the orifice here and make sure that it's flat. I may even run a file over the top here to flatten it. I'll run a file over the top like this just to smooth that down. I may even use a Vargas tool just to get some of the burring from the jaws rocking back and forth on the cylinder. The piston, I'll take down the sharp edges. Now visually inspect the threads. Smooth it down. Take off any burring that accumulates. After that, I will get my cup and put some G-Man PST 407 lube inside my cup so that I can lubricate the seals and reassemble. Over here I have my tool kit. Okay, and it opens up. I have a call out for all the seals right here on the, the front. I have the seals and where they go, it calls it out right here on this side. Detail 107 will be the main seal. 107 is going to be a 2-218 EPR. And I'll follow this guide here to replace all the seals. As you can see here, the kit provides a pick set. But the additional tools that you are going to need, a screwdriver might be handy, a small one. A small crescent wrench if uh, some of the screws are a little bit too tight. A set of metric Allen wrenches. Now the first seal I'm going to replace is I'm going to build the piston back up. You see here I got detail 107 and detail 106. So I'm going to pull those seals. 106 will be a 2-223 two, two, two two EPR and 107 will be a 2-218 EPR. Okay, I'm going to get some lubricant on my finger and I'm going to lubricate the O-ring before I put it on. This is the 2-218, slides on. Then I lubricate the main side seal. I bring that down here. Pinch it open and push it down with my finger, slide it around. Once I get that on, I will pack the main slide seal with the lubricant.
Then I'll lubricate all the surfaces that are going to slide. And I'll set that off to the side. Now I'm going to pull the seals, slide ring, and the uh, garter spring for the cylinder. The garter spring goes on the jaws and it's detail 104. And its number is a G062012700, and in parentheses it says cut to 6.5 inches. These are all pre cut when they're put in the, the kits. But a garter spring unscrews. As you can see, it comes apart and you can just screw it back together like a screw. And they call this a garter spring. Extend it out, you cut it to 6.5 inches. If it seems loose, it might not be cut and you might have to cut it, so. As you can see, it's snug. This one here is an idea of what it'll look like if it's not cut to 6.5 inches. Put the spring on. Now I'm going to pull detail 111, the slide ring which is a GP65S 0610T47. It's on your kit. This bag should be labeled. I mash them down just a little bit so that it fits nice and snug inside the groove. like that. Now I'm going to pull the seal. 105 is going to be O-ring number 2-123 APR. And I'll lubricate the seal, the O-ring. And now I will pinch it down just like that and I can put it in the groove and then just, and it's in the groove. Now I'm going to attempt to pack that groove with some grease so it stays pretty lubed throughout its duration on the line. I will clean up a little of the excess. Now I am ready to reassemble. Now, the fittings are sub-assemblies of two fittings. They're press fittings for press-on hosing. Um, they have them marked off right here on the print if, if there's, they're damaged or they won't hold the tubing in them or anything like that. You can pre-order them. Uh, they have them. It's marked on your tool kit, mail connector. Detail 113. 
as you can see right here. 113 and 112 go together. 112 would be a female pipe adapter. It's got a number right here, 4 and an eighth F50G-S. And if you can't get it from us, you can order it from Parker, if there's a Parker store near you. So the fittings are pretty much self-explanatory. Now, you have to be careful when you assemble this. You want to start by putting your piston in, making sure you're lined up on the orifice and it's lubricated, and you push with your fingers. I usually wipe off the excess fluids and stuff. Now, I waited to put the seals right here on the end until I pushed this through because if you put them in there when you push this through, sometimes they shoot out. <laughs> and you don't want that to happen. And I also take some of this excess and I lubricate the sealing end where the seals are going to set. I just put a nice little thick dose right there just to help for sealing. Now I'm going to look right here on your print. You got a 103 and a 102 details. Detail 102 is an O-ring 2014, detail 103 is a O-ring 2-014, the detail 102 is, is O-ring 2-007, they're EPR O-rings. I will lubricate the O-rings really good on both sides and I press them into their orifices, they, their O-ring slots that they go into. And then I'll rub a little bit of lubricant all the way around them. And I'm pretty much set. Now, for the assembly part. I will hook the girder spring and fit the, the jaw back into its pocket and let it rest where you can do this. I'll put the jaws in. Yeah, it should be springy. And I'm hooking them right there to the garter spring. You can see that they got that little slot right there by my fingernail to hook onto the garter spring there. Now I'll set it down. <clears throat> now you can use a fitting that's flat like this, just a little bit. Myself, I have a piece of stock, round stock, that fits right up in here that I use to put these adapters together. I will take the, the O-rings with the dowel pin and face the dowel pin towards the back. The sleeves got to go down over the jaws. If you're flat on the table, the sleeve, it, it, it's going to push the jaws in, but it's going to lift it up. Right? 
and it's, it's not setting on anything where the jaws swing freely. It's easier when they swing freely, the jaws. All right, now I put my spring on. Now I'm going to show you there's a lot of tension here. So that's a lot of tension on the spring, and I've got to connect to that. Okay, so it helps if you have another person to help you. They can hold this down while they put the top on. But if you got to do it by yourself, then you just got to do it by yourself. <laughs> and, and where there's a will, there's a way, they say. Okay, but... Uh, this also helps to have my Allen wrench out and ready. Now you can pick either side to put it in to start, this side or this side. I've chosen the outside. The dowel pin is faced to the back and the dowel pin is going to go in this hole right here in the middle of my finger. So all I got to do is line my screw up to the screw hole and tighten it in just a little bit to hold it. So I will get the sleeve down over the jaw and put my screw right there and give it a couple of turns. I can tighten it down. And you can see that it is now across the orifice. And I can put the other screw in and tighten it down. And now I take and I do just a little bit extra for tension and for the screws to lock and that's the disassemble, rebuild and reassemble of an APD adapter.